So, I am sitting here at the, where are we again? Everly. Kimpton Everly. On in the, California? In, in California, Los Angeles, at the pool rooftop with the oh. wonderful Dakota Askeville. That's right, Askeville. Yeah, uh -huh. now you're making me mispronounce my last name. <laughs> it's Askeville. Askeville, yeah. For all, for all you women out there, it's Askeville. <laughs> So yeah, he is the director of the beautiful Deadly Crush that just made a Thank release you. this month, actually, like yesterday. Yesterday, yesterday <laughs> it was officially <laughs> released yesterday. Well, Amazon Prime, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we reviewed this movie like about a month ago, so while we were, we're still the first. in Germany, we, I was the first review. You were the first one. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that, that's a real honor. Okay, if I'm hearing you right, you're telling me you had sex with a ghost. This whole entire story, the whole entire concept, um, was it based on some sort of a legend? Because we have that um, almost like fable-esque poem yeah. at the beginning of the film with the rotting soul. Well, it's awesome because you uh, kind of, uh, I mean, you understood it from the beginning. You were like, this whole film is like a fable. Back when we were all children, our one mother, Simshian people believed in a ghost world. Here were the warrior souls who died fierce. They were our helper spirits. They guarded our tribe and protected the weak. When the white man killed my mother, a shaman used a soul catcher to trap her spirit and blow it back to her body. But this was not my mother, because a soul without flesh quickly rots. That's exactly what it is. So like the, uh, so it's a real thing, the fable's a real thing. Uh, the Simshian people, I believe in, in, in the Northwest, they have this hollowed out bare bone, and it's called the soul catcher. And what it is is that when you heal people, their fear is that while you're healing them, the soul will leave. The soul catcher catches that soul and keeps it there so that they can heal them. And that is a real thing. Uh, that's when we said, okay, how, how, do, how do we make ghost fucker? <laughs> Where we get straight to my next question. <laughs> that's a segue, baby, segue. See, that part of the film, that is exactly the part that is a bit like throw some people off some yeah. people love the idea yeah. some people yeah. totally like lose the focus of the yeah. movie they yeah. can't take it seriously yeah. anymore yeah. when that happens yeah. some people just like get get involved in the film when when that scene appears yeah. um <laughs> is I, it so when you saw it, were you like, oh my God, this is going to be, this is... <laughs> I'm gonna, I was like, okay, this is a little funny. <laughs> like, like, you have this totally serious, cool drama going on, right. and like, in, in some authentic, and all of a sudden, yeah. scary parts, and all sure. of a sudden, we have here um, poltergeist sex right. going on. So, so, I don't, so I don't know, it, so... so it uh, has this comedic element, I have to admit, but it's, it's like this... You know, like this uh, relief, like this com comedic relief shortly, like, and, and especially when she's talking to her best friend, her publisher, yeah. about her agent, it was your yeah, agent or publisher? Her agent, yeah. Agent, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, about um, ghost fucking. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it becomes comedic because she's like, well, uh, she like tells her how, how it felt. And yeah. like, it's like, who, wait? Ooh, girl. Like. So there's a so there's a real condition. It's called spectrophilia, and basically, it's what it is. Is uh, it's the uh, well, I mean, it's the gosh, there's a better definition, <laughs> but it's, it's the belief that uh, uh, a person has sexual relationships with a ghost and prefers it. And mm. there's uh, there's a, quite a few people, some known people, who actually claim to have um, had sex with a ghost. It's me, Akasha Wolf, and today we are going to be talking about spectrophilia. And I actually been getting a, uh, I actually got a comment about this in the previous video, which I thought was really interesting because I've been receiving a lot of messages and comments from people talking about this. Like they've literally been asking me how to get a spell to get in contact with a succubus or an incubus for. Um, sexual favors. Uh, 
and that's where it actually kind of got started. So, um, so I don't know how Germany is, but uh, America is really weird. And, well, I mean, it's weird, period. But it's weirder when it comes to sex. Because nobody knows how to deal, like, some people are, like, it's across the, the, uh, the spectrum. Some people are really cool with sex. Some people do not like sex on the screen. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, I know. It's a Rorschach. Everybody has, like, a different reaction totally. To I don't know how, how is that in Germany or, or in Europe? Well, it they... depends on the European country. Like, I would say in Germany, they have, like, um, sex is pretty much a very open thing. Like, people talk about it. Nudity is shown on screen. Prostitution is completely legal in Germany. Wow, okay. And, like, completely legal. Right. Like, you pay taxes as a prostitute. Wow. That, that's how, how it goes. Probably healthier for them as well. It right? is, it is, it is. Like, if, it, it was like, if well, you're doing anything involving sex like I think Germany would be definitely the better place than the United States that's for sure but when it comes to violence and horror right. that's right. where Germany gets problematic sure I think sure. Deadly Crush will even have a few problems like with really with some of the violence yeah interesting you will probably like cut like 20 seconds out when we uh, to get an 18 in Germany really yeah probably okay probably all right <laughs> what's yeah. Also, I you have some pretty no notable names for a first time director. Yeah. Like, yeah. you have William Sandler. William Sandler. Mm, yeah. You have the. From Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. You have that lady from Children of the Ju Corn. Uh, uh, um, Courtney Gaines. Yeah. Is from Children of the Corn. Uh, great actor. And there's a comedian named Judy Tenuta who was pretty big in, in, in the 90s. She, she, had a, she had a great bit with the accordion. Uh, she's fantastic. Yeah, so. She's hilarious. Yeah. So she actually made the uh, scene funny. I didn't think it was going to be funny. Yeah. So how does a fresh director, like somebody who just like officially released his first movie, yeah, yeah. get such notable names? Um, so, uh, God. Uh, so, I, I, so I went to uh, our casting agent. I said, hey, we need to um, you know, cast some people. And so, I don't know if you know this, but on the third day of actual photography, we didn't have uh, any of our main um, actors. We didn't have Bill, we didn't have Courtney, we didn't have Judy. The third day of shooting, no. <laughs> oh, no. Like, everyone's like, who's, who's going to do the lead? I'm like, we don't know yet. So really? What, yeah. So, like, this is... This what is are not, you shooting for three days without any character? I mean, um, a lot of ghost sex, right? That's why there's a lot of ghost sex, because we didn't have uh, the lead character. We're like, well, let's shoot more ghost sex. Uh, but so, uh, and that's what the casting agent was. She was basically saying, look, what are you doing tomorrow? For the next five days, if you're not doing anything in the next five days, why don't you shoot our film? And there was actually, because it was that last minute crazy way of doing it, we had a few actors who said, yeah, we're open for it. And I couldn't say no to Bill Sadler. I love Sasha. Yeah, Adventure. definitely. But uh, like, uh, what, is, and what was like, the, did the shoot go easy with all, uh, all these names? Like, you know, you have all, all these experienced actors, you're pretty new to the game. Like, right, yeah. Um, no, the actors were fantastic. So here's something that, uh, just so that filmmakers know, when you have like these uh, really seasoned actors, like you know Bill, Courtney, and Judy, um, you'll do these takes and you'll let them act and then, okay, well, there you go, let's just move on. But in the cutting room, during post, when you edit them, they're seamless. They are pros. Everything that they do matches the other shot, matches the other shot. When you work with other actors who are kind of improving. It's, it's a bitch to, you know, uh, to make it match. But these pros, they were the easiest uh, people to cut. I don't know, it's magic. One story that we would always tell was that um, one time, um, so on Saturday, 8 a.m., uh, it's the only time that we let all the actors and crew go to explore Yosemite. So it's 8 a.m., and you know, everybody leaves except for me and the producer. 8.15, the power goes off. Oh no. I mean, the entire, like, we're like, what? It's gotta be a mistake. And it, so long story short, we find out that the owner who rented us the cabin did not pay the electricity bill for six months. And it's Saturday, <laughs> and from 8.30 to 2 a.m., I have to find the Department of Water and Power in Yosemite, which is, you know, moonlights at a Taco Bell or something like that. And I have to convince them to turn the power on, or I have, 13 more days that I can't shoot with no power. Oh no. Yeah, and, and, and thank God, 
I convinced them to turn on the power. And as soon as I went back to the cabin, five minutes, everybody was in and we were shooting and nobody knew, except for me and the producer. <laughs> like they don't know, there's so many, so, so also like in these indie films, you're solving crises after crises after crises. So four weeks after the shooting, um, I would still wake up in a cold sweat. Um, I, was in, I, was, I was on PTSD. I would wake up every, I would have dreams for four weeks straight of like, oh my God, the power went out. Oh my God, my actor didn't show up. Oh my God, the sound doesn't work. Oh my God, we lost the cameras. Directing always in my head looks like you have, you're carrying the whole universe of a film on your yeah, shoulder. Sure. But if you have a good producer though, uh, um, they'll help you. I mean, like, did, did you, well, how was it Deadly Crush? Was it like, it was your first thing officially? Yeah, yeah. So but I've done the, theater, but I've done, you know. And uh, was the pressure really hard hard and heavy? I mean, uh, so, you know, we, I mean, we have our shooting schedules and we have our, uh, you know, shot list. So it wasn't too, uh, it, it was never, you never felt like you were caught unawares. It was like you knew exactly the shots that you would take. And uh, we planned it pretty, you know, pretty well. We had 17 days shooting. <laughs> What, um, if you could like change anything in Deadly Crush now, like now that it's over, now that it's released, what would you change? Like everything. Like everything. everything. There's, there's like, what do you, uh. So you're not I mean, the je ne regrette rien. Oh, type. no, no. I love the no, movie no, for no, what no. it is. I mean, like, like, I can't even, uh, even, even if, uh, if, if I'm in the theater and it's, and it's playing, I gotta, I gotta walk out. It's hard for me to watch it with the movie. Really? Um, You're like, that unhappy with the film? It's not un unhappy, it's just so like, like you would make so many changes and you're just over guessing what people are, wait, are they laughing at? How come he didn't laugh at this one? How come he wasn't scared at this one? And it's just, <laughs> I'm in a, a horrible place. Really? Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. You can't, I can't. You can't. You gotta enjoy your movie. I, you can't, not, I, like... I can. I can enjoy the accomplishment, <laughs> but I can't enjoy it like in a theater with audience. I, I, I would change everything. But I, I don't even know if it would be better. I just, I just, I, I just, like it the way it is. Thank you so much. I really like well, it the way it is. That's why we'll be always be friends. <laughs> yeah. That's why we have a connection. I, like I said, it reminded me of early 90s yes. drama, like thriller, horror things, like, and you our audience, like, really appreciates that. Like, when a movie is, has this campy element that you, you have, like, you can laugh with it, but at the same time, it tells a genuinely interesting story. And with a good twist, and, like, with good dialogue, and, the, the, you know, it's, there's fun, you know, it's like, that it's not taking itself too seriously. And I think that is what makes Deadly Crush work. Don't be hard on yourself, bro. <laughs> During the editing, uh, we, they would always ask about tone. Like, what's the tone of this? Is it, is it, and, and it's always been like, well, I don't know, let's just throw this in there. Yeah. Well, this is funny, let's make this funny. Yeah. And everybody else around me was, well, not everybody else, but there are people around me going, wait a minute, we should make this into a horror tone and make that consistent. But then why are we doing indie film? Well, you know, uh, now we we can't do a, a a movie by committee we have to make it eclectic we have to make it individualistic and just you know follow your heart and just you know do what you think uh works and and we'll keep you entertained yeah um when, when films take it, it itself too seriously i get jarred out when pe when films uh, are too tongue-in-cheek and keep you know yeah, okay. i get jarred out as well you know so it's a kind of like a fine balance I know, like, Tarknado would be, Tarknado, for example, would be too tongue-in-cheek for you. Uh, yeah, it'd be like, uh, <laughs> at some point, do we have an aerial emotion? Like, <laughs> like, what's the shark going through? Is the shark going through some sexual identity? Is it a boy or a girl? How do you tell sharks apart? Now, my last question for our dearest audience. Now, we got this beautiful movie out, Deadly Crush. You guys should all check that out. Right. We reviewed it. It's definitely, so far, in the top five of Thank the you. best movies we have seen oh, this I gotta, year. I gotta hug this guy. This is, <laughs> this is the guy. This is the man. After this beautiful first movie that you go, what is coming next? What's your next film? What, oh, what can we expect You're putting me in my stress place young again. young, new director. Oh, God. The expectations um, must be high now, yes. now that Deadly Crush was so good. You know, I mean, there, there's a couple of projects that are um, definitely in a development right now, but there's nothing that uh, that is just, you know, taking me by the balls and going, okay, let's go forward with it. But we'll see. I mean, we're developing it as we speak, so there's a couple of things. All right. All right, everyone. Live from LA. Good night. Hope you had fun. <laughs>